Okay, heading out to my studio, top secret place. Just kidding, it's in my backyard. Gonna be doing another, wait, let me make that more dramatic. Anyway, gonna be doing another one hour portrait practice. I'm doing these once a week to try to get more comfortable with portraits, to try and get more comfortable, let me give myself some more light. There we go. To try to get myself more comfortable doing portraits, um, doing them in a timely manner, finding out what it is that slows me down when I do portraits, and that way I can improve on those things. So a lot of times I've noticed like it's the, the initial setup, like the proportions. So I don't do a full drawing, but I'll give myself some small measurements to have an idea like here are the eyes, here's this, here's that. And I've noticed a lot of times I'm spending half an hour fixing that stuff. So I'm trying to study up, learning about some processes of artists to processes, processes. Is it processes or processes? I don't know. Anyway, this practice is for me to start getting more comfortable with portraits, going in and the one hour, I still finish the portrait, but the one hour is to just again, identify how much I can get done in an hour. And it kind of teaches me what areas that I'm comfortable with that I move quickly on and what areas I need more work on. So that's what I'm gonna be doing. Um, today's portrait is of the Prince, Mr. Purple Rain. So I'll go over kind of my process. I'll do a double shot, what is it called? God, I'm such a rookie with this stuff. Uh, picture in picture and I'll have the photo of Prince and then I'll have me doing the portrait. Obviously sped up, I'm not gonna make you watch a full hour. And then after the hour is done, I'll go over sort of where I'm at, what I think I did well, what I, you know, kind of self critique. And, and then I'll finish it and do it, you know, do it justice and, and put all the finishing details on. And then I can kind of get an idea, okay, how much more time did I need to finish? It's just something I'm doing. I've actually had a ton of fun doing it so far. It's been super helpful. And uh, maybe you can learn something along the way. Let's get started. One of the most important things when doing any portrait is having a great photo. Uh, I get a lot of photos from Pinterest and I found this, which obviously I didn't use. It was just awesome. Um, this was one of the next photos I saw just because it's it's just Prince being Prince. I mean, you got the armpit hair. Um, and then this, I, I really love this shot, but it's already been used in a magazine and I wanted something a little more unique. And he kind of looks like Cat Williams in that picture. So I found this one, which is an older photo. He's a little bit younger at the time, but it's just such a great shot. I love that it's off-centered. I love that he's got that the little curl and everything and just that Prince gaze or that glare that he's got. So winner, winner. Okay, so we've got the reference photo. The canvas is ready to go. We've got all the supplies. I already prepped this with gesso. Uh, I forgot to record that, but it's pretty simple. You just apply the white gesso, gives you a grounded canvas to work with, and um, so that we can paint on top of it without worrying about any of that bleeding into the canvas. But we've got everything we need, so now I'm gonna take one hour to try to see how much I get done and basically what'll happen is after that one hour, I'll still finish it, but I'd like to kind of critique myself and see where I end up after the hour, see what I did well on, to see what's kind of bogged me down. And that way I can kind of keep mental note of those areas and keep you know, working away at those to try to, try to speed that up a little bit. But um, let's get started. So starting off, I'm just going to be marking the locations for the face. Uh, this is something that I eventually am going to stop doing entirely. I try not to do a detailed underdrawing. I want to get to the point where I don't even have to do this, but I'll use a tape measure or a ruler just to make sure I have the proportions of the eye, uh, the difference between the eye and the nose and the lips, uh, just because it saves me so much time if I do things incorrectly because I have to go back in and fix it. So that's something that I, again, I'm doing now, but hope to not have to do in the future. 
as I go in the first stages of, of each portrait, I go in and put in the darker values first, uh, the eye shapes, some of the shadows, uh, just so that I have kind of the placing of where those are gonna be. And then from there, I'll just be going pretty much dark to light. So all of the darker values, so in this case, the darker grays are going in first. Um, some of the blocking just with the hair and the eyebrows and stuff like that. A lot of it is gonna get moved around, but this gives you a good starting point to kind of know where Again, the darker values are, and then over time you'll start to layer on top of that with some of the lighter grays and, and getting close to white and things of that nature, because um, you always go dark to light when, when you're doing something like this. So this is stopping at the one hour point on Prince. Uh, I'm actually pretty happy with how this has gone so far uh, for a few reasons. I typically struggle with keeping certain things proportionally correct. So for example, these eyes aren't flat. There's a slight angle to them. And with stuff like that, if you mess that up, it kind of throws off all the other dimensions of the face because if that's at an angle, but the nose is flat or the nose isn't, lined up with that then it just looks out of whack so i'm actually really happy with the proportions there and the lip size and everything like that um the one big issue that i had was i had the lips too big so he's kind of got a tight um not a pout but <clears throat> it's kind of just outside of his nostrils and i just have it too wide i mean that even needs to come in right there too but all in all the shape the height of that is correct um, another thing that I probably have to adjust, I haven't checked yet, is the face shape here. He's, obviously there's still a lot of work to be done, probably another hour and a half or so I can, I can finish this up. At the end I'll be finishing it with a purple back, I have to do purple, it's Prince. So I'm going to be doing a purple sort of a gradient, it's going to go light to dark, uh, that I think will look really cool, but the rest of it will stay black and white. And yeah, so again, probably another hour and a half and I'll finish it tomorrow. So just as I figured, I was off on the right side of his face. He's got such a specific jaw structure that if you have it wrong, it just doesn't look like him. So right in the beginning when I resumed, I had to go in and fix that. Um, and then as you can see, I just sort of continue to change the grays. I just wasn't happy with it. In the beginning, it looked too dark um, and I switched it like four different times. And this was the biggest mistake I think on this portrait was not just identifying my values and sticking to them from the beginning. One of the interesting things about this one was that I didn't quite feel comfortable. Or I didn't feel like it really looked like him until I got to the eyes. Um, he has such a specific gaze and, and eye shape and he's got a little bit of the makeup and things of that nature so it wasn't until i started going in and actually putting the details in those eyes that i feel like it really started to take shape and, and actually look like him up next i'm just creating the purple for the background so i'm just using ultramarine ultramarine that's a tough word blue and cadmium red uh, just to create purple and there'll be three different shades. So I'll have this nice darker shade first, and then I'll go in and sort of do a gradient dark to light with the three different shades. Uh, you probably notice I don't have any ears and the hair is not done. The reason I go in and put the ears after is in the past when I've done the ears and all the details of the hair first, it's almost guaranteed that I'll go in and mess it up somehow and accidentally paint over the ear and then I have to fix it anyway. So a lot of the times I just leave those off now and and go in and do those as like the very last thing prince is such an iconic figure and his hair is so amazing and all that so putting in these final details and these last touches it just sort of solidified it and you're just like boom there's prince
Okay, so we are now looking at the finished product. I'm actually really happy with this. It ended up only taking, I think, a little over three hours, which is fine. You know, I'll, you saw where I ended up after one. It was, a, it was a pretty good start. I think my biggest mistakes on this one, and I think I addressed them earlier in the recording, um, is not identifying the values soon enough or, or sticking to the values. And what I mean by that is when you have different shades of, of colors, of black and white, you're gonna have your darkest gray, you're gonna have your lightest gray. I went in and changed those like four times. If, if you recall during the, the time lapse, you kind of saw me changing it. The original reason was the first gray, it was too dark when it dried. And so I didn't like that after the one hour but I still should have stuck to it a little bit more. And so the best way to do that is just mix the colors you're gonna be using and then stick to those and try to stick, stick to those. So then you cut down any sort of back and forth time of having to remix them, trying to match them, and then you go lay it down and it's not correct. So that I didn't like. Um, again, I think my proportions, I did a good job at this time and that saved a ton of time. Cause like on Adele, I don't remember what it was. I think it was her nose. I was way off on the nose and I had gone pretty far without realizing that. And once I did, I had to change a bunch of stuff. So that added like 40 minutes. So I was happy with this one that I didn't have to do that. Um, some of the cool things at the end, like his, his hair curl, I mean, Prince had the best hair. So his hair curls really added it and kind of really solidified, you know, the, the picture or the portrait. I'm gonna varnish it now with a satin varnish from Liquitex. Uh, that'll help give it a little bit of shine. It'll help the colors pop and it'll also give it a protective coating so that the paint is finished and then I'm done. That is done, well for now. It's gonna take a couple hours to dry, so I'll come back and check on it, see how it looks. And then that's pretty much the finishing touch. And we'll see how that looks in a couple hours. Okay, should be all dry now. Let's go see how this turned out. Look at that. That came out perfect. A nice even shine to it, not too much. If you use like a gloss varnish, it can be a little too much shine. But this looks really good. That's it. Finished product. So this is the finished, do this clapping thing a lot. I don't know what else to do with my hands when I start these things. This is the finished product, completely finished. This is after the varnish, everything is done, autograph. Um, Uh, this was actually a really good practice session. This is the whole point of doing these. Um, I know exactly what I got hung up on. Some branding. I know exactly what I got hung up on. Uh, I know how I could have shaved some time down. I saw that doing the proportions more accurately from the beginning and making sure that the eyes, nose, the spacing and everything um, saved me a lot of time in the long run. So, um, yeah, I'm just, I'm happy about it because that was the whole point and that is the whole point of me doing these and I am gonna be doing these uh, regularly. I'm trying to do these once a week. I don't know if I'll do a YouTube video once a week of these, but I'll at least be doing these portraits once a week. Yeah, I hope maybe you learned something from this. I uh, hope you enjoyed watching it. If you didn't, um, I'm sorry. Yeah, thanks for watching and I'll be doing more of these more often. So make sure to tune in.